Welcome back for part two in our discussion on this exciting topic, the differences in the way that men and women communicate. Let's jump right back in. Okay, so um, we in a, uh, you know, we're, as we're preparing this episode, we found these six signs of poor communication skills. Again, thank everybody for joining us on today. Uh, and we're talking about the differences in the way that men and women communicate, okay? And in this example, we're pointing out for you uh, six different um, signs of poor communication skills, all right? Um, why, which do you believe uh, can do the most damage? Number one, we're asking our guest, uh, Mrs. Wendy Jones and uh, Claude High, also known as the Real OG, all right. Which do you believe can do the most damage and which do you believe is easiest to improve or fix? Um, I believe the one way communicator, uh, the one way communication is the most damaging hmm. because you going down a one way street. There is no turn right or left. You just going down a one way street and there's no alternatives you just going a one way your way no other way it's the one way and there's no other avenues for you to for somebody to come in to reach you when you it's just a one way that's that's my take on that one okay Claude you got thoughts no, on either of those I was gonna give her let her do the other one because um I said when she picked that one I was like oh yeah that's the same one I picked but I picked that one is my easiest to uh, fix, you know what I mean? And, okay. and that, that, that immediately had me say, oh, okay, I guess men are from Mars and women are from Venus, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Because I feel like with the one-way communication is they there, I can easily address that. If everything is one side, I can easily stop you, put you on my, my opinion of the situation, you know what I'm saying? Show you your points of, okay, are you sure this is what you're saying, right? You want this, this, and this. Okay, that's fine. This is what I want, this, this, and this. You know what I'm saying? And then we can go there or we can fix it, I think. You know what I'm saying? As long as I can show you, especially if it's a one-way situation. Now, my one I thought was the most detrimental to me was uh, the getting personal part. You know what I'm saying? I think I said, <laughs> yeah, when somebody hit you with, you know, your mother this or that or you do this all the time or that all the time. And right. You know, to the roots of the soul in the spirit, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of times people just shut down, especially men. If any women that dealt with that, once a man just shut down, he like, mm, I'm gone. And he really don't want to talk because he know he's going to be, he don't know, he, he's not going to talk. He's going to want to be aggressive. You know what I'm saying? He's going to do something. And he, yeah. even women these days now, they're they're pretty much like that. You know what I'm saying? Once you get personal, <laughs> they, 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 they just went off the handle. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So, Wendy, you gave us what you believe is the, the most detrimental or damaging, but out of these examples, which one do you think is maybe the easiest to fix or to repair? The you directives. Okay. And I believe that because that, that type of personality wants accountable, uh, accountable change. They want accountable behavior. They want you to be reliable. They want you to be accountable. So... And what you can, how you can communicate to them is if you tell them you want a, a effective change, you want accountability, how about you change, use the same sentence, sentence change the words around mm -hmm. to get the results you want. Right. So you can have a comment here and this sentence, and it means something one way. You can put it all together and it means something different. So if you can explain that to them, they'll get the re they'll they'll understand, I believe, and you'll get they'll get the results that they're they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Got you. I get it. I get it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna put you on the spot, uh, babe. Which mm -hmm. of these do you believe is uh, the most damaging or detrimental, and which one do you think is the easiest to fix? 
Okay, well, first of all, I want to say I really liked Claude's perspective when he talked about the getting personal because that is so real. Oh my gosh, back in the day, especially like when you're, you know, when you're young, it's too, you know, getting personal, hidden below the belt, talking about, you know, oh, oh yeah. my gosh, just the thoughts that just went through my head when he said <laughs> that. It's like, oh my gosh, that is so true. And then, you know, the other parties just shut down or they ready to fight and, you know, just a bunch of stuff. So that getting personal, that is because I wasn't going to say that one. But when he gave examples, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's true, because I was going to do the one way communication, too. And so I'm like, yeah, that one is, too. Um, I think a lot of them are detrimental. Um, I just, you know, the one that is the most to me is that one way communication because to me is that is to me the one way communication is a selfish mentality to me it's just the my way or nobody's way you know just listen to what i say what i say goes i'm not listening to what you say you know to me it's just the one way communication is just to me is a very selfish mentality because you don't want to listen to what nobody say you're not trying to hear any constructive criticism, no feedback. It's just all one way. And so you're just kind of tuning everything out. And so I think that to me, the one way communication, actually it can go both ways is because you could fix it by having the two way communication is opening up your ears, um, listening to people, um, you know, accepting the you know, constructive feedback, being willing to listen. And so I think that that one-way communication can be a two-way communication. And so now that issue is fixed because now, you know, there is no, you know, getting personal and anything like that because as you communicate and you have two-way communication, that could be easily resolved because you're able to go back and forth in that communication process. Gotcha, gotcha. What about you? What do you think? Um, man, you know what? I think that the most damaging, I'm going to go with number three, number three, people who are throwing only negatives out there, um, in the, in the communication process. And I'll tell you why, because I believe that that is an ingrained mindset. And so, although you may be able to help to change, uh, circumstances or surroundings in some situations, when a person is completely negative and that's what they spew out all the time is, is negativity, that's really difficult to change a person's thought process in that regard. And so when you're dealing with somebody to where uh, a lot of what you get is the negatives and that's what they throw out all the time. I heard one of you guys say it, that, um, you know, when somebody is always, you know, you always this or never do that. You know, that I've heard it before that that's dangerous language to use the mm -hmm. words always and never as though there's no in between there. You know what I mean? And so basically you saying that somebody in your mind is 100 percent wrong 100 percent of the time. Mm -hmm. when you say always and never. And so somebody who always throwing out negatives like that, I think is real challenging to deal with in terms of communicating. But I do. um you know, I, I too, man, I think the whole getting it personal thing is real challenging too. But I think number five, I think number five is real easy to fix. Uh, when you talk about disregarding or invalidating people's feelings, because I think number five is so close to number one. I think that those two are like, they match. You know what I mean? To where all somebody is think of, can think about is they self. I think that in their own way, they're disregarding or invalidating the fact that somebody else feels some kind of way too, and that they have to take that in a little bit. And so I think that uh, there's some opportunity to try to help correct that thought process by helping somebody see and understand that you ain't the only one that feels some kind of way about things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, that's, that's, that's very good. That's a lot of good feedback based on, you know, that slide there. And so, um, one last thing, I know we had a lot of dialogue, you know, in our previous episode about how the words never mind being spoken can be misinterpreted or sometimes lead to a total shutdown in, in the communication after someone feels like they're being blown off or ignored, you know. And so 
you know, then in those situations, there's an opportunity to explain and reconcile the whole thing by both parties, you know, playing a role in that. But for you, for you guys, Wendy, you know, and Claude, you know, when somebody try to reach out for support, you know, whether it's through a text message or if they call you or something like that, and before you get time to reply, they end up hitting you back with the never mind. How would you perceive that? Um, first I would think about how long it took me to respond. Did it take me a day or did I not respond at all? Um, so it just depends. It depends on what the never mind, uh, you know, it just, it, it just depends because it could have taken me a long time to respond and they said, never mind. And so you just don't know, especially with text messages, because they could have had the situation resolved or saying, never mind, forget it. You took too long to respond. So that's one thing about text messaging. You really don't, you can take it one way and that's not the way they meant it. Right. So the best thing with that would be to still talk to that person and say, hey, I apologize for not getting back with you or taking too long because you don't know what the never mind means. So, you know, it just it just depends. Now, um, sometimes I've said never mind, and it's because you have irritated me. So it just <laughs> depends on the situation. The situation. <laughs> yeah, it depends on every situation. Got you. <laughs> okay. What well, are your thoughts, well, I mean, I feel pretty much the same as her. It's like we got get some of the same texts and stuff like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, usually I try to be attentive to getting back with people, responding, you know what I mean? And, but like you said, a lot of times somebody, if it's a fast, never mind, I assume that they resolved the situation or figured out whatever they got, and I won't even think no, no more into it. Like you say, if it's something that took a little while and they say, never mind, I figured, oh, okay, they didn't got frustrated or I didn't respond fast enough, you know what I mean? Yep, got you. Now, babe, I know we had, again, we, you know, we had some dialogue on that before because some of the factors that we were talking about is sometimes April, because we remember we talked about it's all about familiarity. And so I think one of the things we were talking about is that the familiarity you have dealing with a male versus a female. And so the possibility that generally speaking, you know, like you said, Claude, men, women generally are better communicators or listeners than, than women in some cases. But generally speaking, a, a response from a male may be different than your thought process in terms of the response you get from a male might be different than your thought process based on a response you get from a female. Um, babe, what do, what do we say about that? What do you think about it? Well, what I said about that was, okay, so you said that if it was a guy or something and they said, never mind, your your response was, oh, okay, you know, no worries. They must have gotten it figured out. But from a woman, that would be something totally different. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You know, a female, it could be a male or a female. I think it's just based on the familiarity and the circumstance, because that could be the same approach that a female can take is though, you know, maybe no worries, you got it figured out. But if you know that person well enough, you know, you didn't, if you got a certain response from a person that you know that they're not going to do, you know, submit your request in enough time or something like that, you're going to say, never mind, because you know that, you know, they're not going to do it. So now you are upset. But if you, you know, you don't get a response, that's no communication. That's another non-response, no communication. So now you're upset. And so there's different factors depending on who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so it just, you know, like, like they're saying, it depends on the situation. It depends on who you're dealing with. It doesn't matter if it's a female or a male. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I just think that it goes both ways. Gotcha. But I think that the, the, the real truth that we were talking about, male and female differences, is the recovery. The recovery. Absolutely, the recovery. You know what I mean? And, and when that's where the two-way part come in, like Wendy said, you get that phone, you pick that phone up and say, hey, you know, what's going on? I didn't get your text or, you know, did you get it taken care of? So that follow-through is what's important because sometimes you don't get that text message. 
you know, sometimes you're very busy, you know, we, we're all working, you know, and so we may get busy, we may not be able to answer the text, we may miss the phone call to where it's like, okay, some people know our schedule, some people know we can't get to that phone call or that text. And so to do the follow through, hey, did you get my text? Did you get my phone call or whatever? But to just be mad, that non response, and then you're mad, that's still, you know, not fair to the other party to just say, you know, never mind, because you know what I'm doing, you know what I'm going through. And that just goes both ways with males or females. Yeah, yeah. One thing that one thing that stood out that Claude said a little bit earlier is he was talking about how, and this is what I was saying when we had the discussion before, is that when a man shut down and I'm trying to explain to you, like I, I think I gave an example very similar to what you said, Wendy. Look, I apologize. I was a little bit delayed in getting with you. However, I'm available now. What can I help you with? And many times the difference in how you recover makes a difference in how that relationship goes from that point moving forward. Because as Claude was saying, men will shut down and like, okay, I tried to explain to you. I was busy. I wasn't blowing you off and you still going on about it. So I'm good <laughs> on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think far as a, a communication, especially in a relationship, um, usually it's going to be one's going to lead, and it could be either or. It could be the woman that's the actual leader of the relationship, or it could be the male that's the leader of the relationship. What you don't want, and you want to make sure you're having a healthy communication there, is uh, one of them having fear in the communication, you know, not feeling like they can express themselves. Um, cool. Yeah, you know, I mean, because I see a lot of it out there, you know what I'm saying? And you run into it. I'm talking about across the board. I'm talking about as far as a bo bosses, co-workers, friends, family, you know, um, it's the one dominating person that's running everything, you know what I mean? And other people are in fear of either losing the relationship or, or the rejection or the wrath that they're going to put out there on them, you know what I'm saying? And I think uh, in, in general out here, especially, I think we should be given to our viewers is if you see somebody like that, to be able to put them to the side and say, hey, look, man, you need to tone that down. But I just passed up a lot of, you know, relationships I've seen. I'm like, dude, you ain't got to be trying to front and impress me, you know what I'm saying? Or vice versa. Hey, you ain't got to put him down because of this, this, and this. You know, what y'all got going, y'all need to take that to the back and, you know, settle that, you know what I mean? And a lot of times they'll come back and, and they appreciate it, you know what I mean? But out here in life, in the world, as we grow, we just have to be nurturing of one another. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's and that's good that you said that because you know, like because you're very community focused, so you're in the community and you just kind of gauge the crowd, you gauge the people that's there, so you kind of know what your approach should be because it's like okay this is how i know how to approach this person or that person based on your communication style and so some people can be real aggressive or you know based on how you try to approach them and so you just kind of know how to you know talk to them and so i think that that's really good and that's what we're kind of talking about is personalities knowing who we dealing with knowing like what wendy said with her tenants knowing how to approach them, how to talk to them. You may need to come into the office or I could just talk to you over the phone. And so I think that that's like you saying, it's a broad thing with, you know, people in general overall. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, and I think in, in closing, I think that the, Claude, you gave a really good example of what I was speaking of in the episode is that um, we discussed it before, which is that when that fear factor is out there or the word that I used is, uh, a, a possibility potentially using that disconnect as an opportunity to manipulate the situation. Oh, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when, whenever I'm, you know, when there's an effort to try to reconcile, to do the follow-up and you're saying like, Hey, I apologize. Um, because the, the emphasis that I put out there is that um, in our culture, in our community, um, there are a lot of our women who have dealt with disappointment, um, dealt with being let down by men who don't want to stand up and be supportive. It doesn't have to be in a relationship. It could just be in the sense of a relationship that uh, we are we grew up together or uh, we're a part of a community group together. And if you need something, if you call me or reach out to me, I need you to know that you can count on me to respond and be supportive. And so with, with that weight goes understanding that I'm going to do everything I can to keep the relationship intact. And if you are still continuing on and refusing 
to allow the reconciliation to take place because of a disconnect or because of a failed communication, then all of a sudden, if you're not careful, and we both have to be careful, uh, it be turning into a manipulation tactic to where I could care less about repairing it. So there's a disconnect in the long-term outlook of the relationship because at the end of the day, I want you to feel bad and feel as though you owe me one for not answering my call today. <laughs> Wow, that's right. But and and I think we as adults have to display good communication skills of, with one another, as our young ones see us. You know, the kids see this because that that manipulation. That's when they learn how to start doing that manipulation. Oh my gosh, you're talking a whole nother show. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. yeah. yeah no, I don't want to interject too much because I know we could wind up somewhere else. <laughs> oh, that is that is so huge. You are so right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we thank you guys. Uh, I think we had some really effective communication today. Um, did anybody want to have any closing words at all about this particular topic before we wrap up? Um, well, we'll let Wendy go if she got something to add to it. Um, I had a great time. Uh, thank you for having me. I enjoyed myself. Um, I have learned some things that I need just listening to the men talk, um, learn some things that I can work on in my marriage, just with, um, uh, you know, learning from other men. So Absolutely. thank you. That's right. Absolutely. Claude, you got anything for us? Well, well yeah, I think, I mean, I just want to hit on y'all topic of, you know, the good communication is fundamental for all relationships out there you know what i mean um yeah. it helps you know build positive emotional connections you know what i'm saying and that's if son to son daughter to daughter daughter to son son you know it it goes so far you know what i mean mm -hmm. and a lot of times we don't see these individual things you know out here as far as the men all the time and segmenting them into one thing, you know what I'm saying? So we, where we're talking specifically here on this show, we can't solve all problems, but we can put this out there in the air for other people to understand, you know, the communication that you have to be able to interpret, listen, and respond back. You know, your response means something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So we thank you guys for joining us on today um, and, and being a part of the show. Uh, hopefully we have some opportunities to have you come on as guests in the future. And if so, we'll be reaching out to you. Thank Love you guys it. so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Yeah, babe. I think that was, uh, I think that was extremely effective. I, I learned some, like Wendy said, I learned some things myself today. Absolutely. And I think with this um, communication um, piece that we had here, I'm just really excited to know that, you know, with our guests on, you know, with both of us, you know, we, you know, talked about and discussed and know that there is no, you know, big thing that, you know, at least between the four of us in our discussion that men are better, women are better, you know, type thing is because I don't know if it's because we're all professional and we're open minded in our thinking and we have this, um, mature understanding of communication. And also, I think, too, with experience um, that we all have, you know, with being, you know, communicators, I think that that may, you know, play a big factor in that role, because I don't know if you are inexperienced in your communication, you may feel some type of way of one way or the other. So I think that, you know, we really had a really good, healthy conversation, I think, too, because we all may be, you know, mature in our thinking in terms of, you know, having an open mind and knowing that, you know, based on experience that, you know, no, we can go this way or that way. It's not one way or that way. And so I really, you know, like the fact that we were all open minded and just, honest with how we feel because it's true you know we're not saying that you know we're just one-sided to one way or the other and that just really made me glad because we you know we weren't being biased but we weren't lying either you know we were just telling the truth absolutely and you know we spoke to it at the beginning of the show you say i like to stir stuff up but deep down it's not that i just believe in having open dialogue being honest because many times what happens is 
when people are forced to, and we, you talked about it before on a previous episode, when people are forced to walk on eggshells and dealing with other people, there's so much that you suppress, so much that you uh, withhold from letting out. And so that person on the receiving end, or they're the person that's dishing out the, the kind of um, dialogue or the attitude that makes you feel like you have to walk on eggshells and dealing with them. When you keep it in and you don't let it out, that person doesn't know that they should probably make an adjustment, not only in dealing with you, but with other people. So you're doing that person an injustice by keeping it in and not being open and communicating and being transparent to say, hey, look, man, the, the way you kind of were talking to me, I, that was, I felt like, you know, I didn't take it super personal, but I kind of felt like you were directing it at me in a personal way. You know what I mean? And that's the only way that people can see and understand that uh, this, uh, the purpose of this show and the purpose of this dialogue is to improve on the way that you're communicating with people, not just me, but I'm trying to help you out in dealing with other people in the future as well. So you should receive it in a good way. And that's why we talked about the follow through, whether it's a phone conversation or just following up, period, because sometimes, like we, we talked before in the last episode, sometimes we talked about, you know, some people think that it's doing too much and you think that you're over communicating. So, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to go back and, no, it's good to clear the air. It's good to get an understanding because that's where the miscommunication comes from when you don't say anything, when you don't try to clear it up. Hey, did you get that text? Hey, did you get my message? Because, I mean, even with technology, just because it's been upgraded doesn't mean that you can't not get a text, that you cannot miss a phone call. I mean, you still have to do that follow through and you could really mess up a relationship that you may potentially have over a misunderstanding, over miscommunication. And sometimes people are bent on being right instead of getting it right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so there's always opportunity, um, and you spoke on it real heavily, um, to really have that follow-up. Have the follow-up that says that, hey, look, I don't want this to take our relationship in the wrong direction. Um, I was delayed in getting back with you because I was busy or occupied, but I'm available to support you in whatever way you need. Uh, but at the same time, on the receiving end, I get it. I understand. Um, and I believe that in the future, because deep down, you're reaching out to that person because you feel as though that is a friend or that's someone that is reliable to you. And so, like you said, you have to make sure that you're focusing on looking at the big picture, long term outcome of that relationship. And guess what? At the end of the day, we always use, you know, reference to say, hey, it ain't worth blowing a gasket over. It's not worth, you know, uh, blowing out of proportion or being extra, like you say, sometimes it's just a matter of making sure that we understand each other so that we don't have any lingering disconnect. Absolutely. And I know that we could talk about this for <laughs> an extended period of time. Yeah, but yeah. you already know the the routine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we thank you for joining us on All Day Edify, where, of course, our aim is to uplift, inform, and enlighten you all day, every day. Do you provide human services? Are you an entrepreneur that contributes to society? Do you have access to tools and resources that facilitate growth and development? Come be a guest on our show. You can email us at alldayedify at gmail.com or send us a message on our Facebook page at All Day Edify. The TV Talk Show. The TV Talk Show. The TV Talk Show. The TV Talk Show. The TV Talk the TV Show. Talk Game, Talk of show. Life. Game of Life. Game of Life. Game Hosted of life. by the real, OG. the real OG. The real OG. You can watch it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 7 p.m. at www.sundial.tv In the game of life, you're going to get knocked out, get knocked down. Ain't nobody going to be there to pick you up. Mama not going to be there to hold your hand all the time. Daddy ain't going to be there to, to shield you all the time. We done went insane. When you done go insane, you don't even know certain things that you do. Real OG is going to give it to you raw and uh, in your face. You know what I mean? What's going to be your your what and your why you know what i'm saying what is it that's gonna get you motivated don't forget my haters y'all know what it is catch up on past episodes on youtube search sundial networks tv show game of life hey it's me sonya check me out 
Tuesdays and Thursdays between 8 and 9, and at 7 Central, while I host Top 10 from the Streets on HiD.TV. Yes, and you can also search us under High Dimension Networks on Roku. Check me out.